Hello, I'm Telkany, and you're watching the Nerd Navigator. Come join me as I explore video games, movies, comic books, and anything else I can find. everyone, I'm Telkney, your Nerd Navigator, and for this video, I'm going to explore the race and class differences between Elder Scrolls Online and World of Warcraft. Please give this video the big old thumbs up if you liked it, and subscribe to my channel so you can get plugged in as I upload new content. First, I'm going to cover the race choices between ESO and WoW. Starting with ESO, we have 10 choices to choose from. However, there are three factions within the game, but really only matter for the purposes of specific PvP campaigns that you do have to choose to participate in. Otherwise, you can group and explore the world with your friends regardless of what faction you are in. In ESO, there are no specific PvP or PvE servers, just one big server per world region such as North America or Europe. This also means you don't have to ask your local friends, hey, what server do you play on? Now back to the races. If you've played Skyrim, these choices are likely not going to be new for you, but there are four human choices to choose from. The Britons, Britons, whatever you want to call them, Nords, Red Guards, and Imperials. Now the Imperials are locked behind a DLC paywall. You might be asking, but Telkany, what are the differences between these four different human races? I'll tell you. Mostly it's skin color and their different racial passives. We'll get to racial passives in a little bit. Don't get ahead of me. Now, there are three elf choices, and they're yellow, pale, and dark. That's uh, high elves, wood elves, and dark elves. And finally, rounding off the list, we have orcs, Kajik, which are cat-like people, and Thargonians, which are lizard-like people, Iskar for life. Now, ESO presents you with a somewhat difficult choice between fashion and function, as each race has very powerful racial passives that will definitely help or hinder your character depending on your ultimate goal for how you wish to play. For example, if you choose the human race of Redguard, you will ultimately unlock the following passive increases of 9% stamina recovery, 10% increased max stamina, and your melee attacks restore 3% of your stamina. Before I go much deeper, allow me to quickly explain that in ESO, there are two base resources, that being stamina and magicka that you essentially must choose between for your character. These attributes result not only determining the size of your resource pools, but also affect the amount of damage or healing the abilities aligned to those attributes do. Stamina is essentially all of your physical activities from melee weapons and bows to certain class skills, and Magico is, well, all the magic stuff. At this point in time in the game's meta, trying to hybrid between these attributes is not very viable, except for maybe, I don't know, a, a tank that doesn't have to do damage or worry about healing anyone, but really, uh, no. Okay, back to explaining the racial passives in ESO. So, going back to our Red Guard character, who is obviously much stronger as a stamina melee user than a magic user, because right out of the gate, they have a lot going for them with stamina. The same holds true for, say, a High Elf, who will end up with 9% Magicka recovery, 10% increased maximum Magicka, and 4% increased damage to Frost, Fire, and Shock, which traditionally is going to be your spell-based kind of Magicka abilities. If you were to choose a High Elf because you like their appearance, but wanted to be a physical melee character, you're essentially choosing to miss out on passives other races would have given given you to benefit that role because you wanted to, to look better. And there's nothing wrong with wanting to look better. On the other side of the coin, World of Warcraft does have passive abilities, but they are much more toned down and result in more like a 1% increase to different stats than the 10% seen in ESO. So if you choose to play a race you prefer because of their appearance, you miss out on very little in terms of stats that would have been a better fit for how you will play the character. In World of Warcraft, you're provided with 13 races to choose from, which are divided between two factions, the Horde and the Alliance. Unlike in ESO, 
You cannot participate in any way with the other faction besides in player versus player. They are the Hatfields and McCoys, the North and the South, the Crips and the Bloods. If your friend is on the opposing faction, there's no way to group or to engage with them in any cooperative way. Also, just because I touched on this for ESO, there are actually multiple servers for World of Warcraft. So if you are starting up and wanting to play with friends, make sure you know exactly what server and what faction they're playing on so that you can play with them. Okay, with that out of the way, let's list out the WoW races. On the Alliance side, you have humans, dwarves, night elves, Elves, gnomes, Draenei, and Worgen. On the Horde side, you have Orcs, Undead, Tauren, Trolls, Blood Elves, and Goblins. With lastly, the Pandarians, which you can choose which faction you wish to play with. Once you've chosen a race, it's on to choose a class, which will be the primary determination of how your character will play for its life. In Elder Scrolls Online, you have the choice between four classes. Dragon Knight, Knight Blade, Sorcerer, and the Templar. This seems incredibly restrictive until you come to learn that the three class skill lines that you get for each class only represent 18 out of the 93 abilities your character can obtain throughout the course of the game. And only 12 of the 109 passives that you can get, excluding even crafting. You see, the classes in ESO are there just to give some flavor in hundreds of custom builds that people make. While they can wildly change a build, ultimately it's really all about choosing which of the six of the 93 abilities available will be on your limited hotbar. So while classes help to define your character, they do not make the ultimate determination. So for example, a Templar can play like a typical paladin from D&D, or I can play like a healer, like some cleric, or an inquisitor, rain holy destruction down on your enemies. A dragon knight can fill the typical warrior tank niche, but also be a spell-wielding fire mage of devastation, or a dual-wielding barbarian spinning and slicing through hordes of enemies. The choice is really up to you. Whereas in World of Warcraft, your class will define your character. Almost every class has three specialization lines that you can swap to at any time when out of combat. Multiplying the 12 classes, that being warrior, paladin, hunter, rogue, priest, shaman, mage, warlock, monk, druid, demon hunter, and death knight, into really 36 classes being arms fury protection holy retribution protection beastmaster marksman survival assassination outlaw subtlety discipline holy shadow elemental enhancement restoration arcane fire frost affliction demonology devast destruction brewmaster mistweaver windwalker balance Feral, Guardian, Restoration, Havoc, Vengeance, Blood, Frost, and Unholy. Now, granted, in some specializations, they don't differ by an incredible degree in some classes as they do in others. For example, the difference between the Rogue Assassination specialization and the Subtlety specialization, where they're both damage-dealing roles, are not as dramatically different in playstyle as changing from the Monk's Brewmaster specialization, which is a tank role, to a Mistweaver, which is a healing role but even in those cases where they aren't super different they do have different flavors of play style and usually have different rotations or complexity for my closing thoughts on the races and classes of these two games for this versus series i really want to do you know want to declare a winner or a loser even if it's a bit of a trope or cliche in terms of races i have to hand it to world of warcraft for a far wider selection and not limiting one's choice to being pigeonholed into a specific role. And for the class systems, they really do feel like uh, apples and oranges, as it's like comparing a skill-based system to a class system, even though they both have classes. That being said, if they tied in this category, WoW wins having a solid win in the race category. Please join me next week as I explore the combat systems within both of these two games.